Hi, in this video we are going to look at uh, a continuation of the third part of the Always On series and uh, we are going to complete the, uh, the series with basically uh, the remaining tasks as far as Always On is concerned. Mainly this includes uh, looking at some of the Always On DMVs uh, to understand exactly how to monitor an Always On solution as well as uh, a look at the dashboard, how to use the listener group and how to perform a manual failover. In the first part of the series, we looked at the fundamental idea between Always On and other high availability solutions like clustering, mirroring, and replication. And uh, we saw how Always On has uh, the advantages of all these three different mechanisms without any of their significant disadvantages. In the second half of the series, or in the second part of the series, we looked at how you can go ahead and configure or set up Always On and use always on uh, for creating replication uh, not replication but basically always on availability groups uh, between two different replicas who are uh, connected to a failover cluster in this part of the series let's go ahead first look at some of the common dmvs that you're likely to use as part of always on and uh, after that we'll go ahead and look at the dashboard and wind up the series with the um, with the manual failover so as you can see here, I've already got some of the DMVs listed. Uh, one of the more frequent DMVs that you're likely to use include uh, the database replica states, the uh, the replica states themselves of the uh, the replicas, and again uh, the cluster member group things like that. But here are a couple of other ones that you're really going to be interested in now because Always On has uh, synchronous replication or synchronous uh, data movement between uh, different replicas it can actually go ahead and do automatic page repair where if the primary or any of the other uh, environments have uh, a database corruption because of hard disk related issues then it can easily go ahead identify those issues and take the corresponding page from any of the other online replicas this allows you to go ahead and run dbcc check db and some of the other uh, dbcc consistency checks that we have within sql server less frequently because uh, with this particular option now available there's a good chance that uh, you would always go ahead and have a page repair happening automatically without really having to do a large amount of checks in the background especially this could be useful if you're dealing with very large databases at which point we're usually running dbcc check db does put a good amount of stress on the hardware so if you look at it again you can see pretty much similar stuff that we've always been seeing with dbcc check db so you've got the database id the file id and the page id as well as the page status and the different types of error codes associated with it the next thing you might be interested in looking at is the high availability dr um, group states now this is again uh, i've got one availability group at the moment and it's on uh, node one which is the primary and as you can see it's online so everything is good synchronization health status is also healthy so uh, that's a good thing to know uh, usually you want to go ahead and monitor this first to make sure that everything is up and running if you ever find an issue here then you might need to drill, drill down into some of the other dmvs to find out exactly uh, what's going on You've also got some basic uh, IDs associated with uh, the different groups. So you can see they're all um, unique identifiers. Again, uh, for the most part, you can go ahead and just look these things up uh, when you need it. And they're not really going to be very practically useful from a monitoring standpoint. And you don't really need to worry too much about this until you actually face an issue. The different members at this point, I really have just two of them, Node 1 and Node 2 which is uh, the nodes that are part of my failover cluster and as you can see the status of both of them are up the next uh, DMV that you want to look at is basically the cluster states so here you notice that the cluster state doesn't really mean the cluster uptime but just the fact that this replica is part of an availability group and it's joined to the cluster as a standalone the next thing again here is the instance node mapping which basically tells you which node is mapped to which resource group again I've got just one resource group to which I've got two nodes so uh, not much uh, happening here in this particular DMV either next one is the cluster network which basically gives me an idea about what subnet my uh, particular cluster nodes belong to so I've got two nodes and I've got two subnet IPs mapped at the moment the next one you're more likely to be using, the last two are some of the stuff that I think you'd be uh, using pretty frequently, 
now you got the replica ID and you got the group ID and as you can see uh, I'm currently querying on the uh, replica ID 830E which is a unique identifier code for this particular instance which is uh, node 1 my primary operational state it's online and again it's connected so a lot of quick information about the health of the environment by just querying the DMVs now this is again at the node level so if you want ha if you have multiple replica nodes or if you have multiple availability groups you can just come here and click on DM HADR database replica states this will give you individual replica groups or basically database availability group information so as you can see I've got replica ID 83 and then I've got just one database associated with it so one availability group it's synchronized and the good thing about this particular one is that it gives you information like the LSNs and uh, the last time something was sent over so it gives you a good idea about whether you're going to have any data loss as part of this process especially useful if you haven't set up any synchronized uh, replication or synchronized commit mode between uh, the two uh, or three different replicas that you might have So these are some of the DMVs that you want to be using frequently with always on now if you're not really comfortable with DMVs or you're not really looking to go ahead and work with DMVs then the good thing about always on is that it summarizes all this information as part of a dashboard which is what you see here so if you're really just looking to connect to the always on failover cluster and just look at the dashboard directly you can just simply click uh, the availability group and right click and choose dashboard so you'll get a lot of the information that you're looking for here so I've got the database madworks synchronized on both the primary as well as the secondary and clicking on node 1 will give me some additional details about what's going on in addition to this you have a failover wizard which is again something that you'd be uh, really interested in using if you're looking for uh, a fairly large amount of uptime the idea is that uh, occasionally when you're doing rolling updates uh, you might want to go ahead and use the uh, failover wizard so click failover wizard press next obviously I'm on node 1 right now so I want to fail over to node 2 and again fail over readiness um, no data loss so just press next I'm going to connect to node 2 using Windows authentication which is basically what I want to do as soon as I'm connected I press next and then finish at this point it starts manually failing over from node 1 to node 2 so you can see there are some basic checks that happen already you can see that AG1 uh, is secondary over here so after the failover it's gonna go ahead and uh, migrate and this particular node should come up as primary now when while that's happening one of the other things that you might be really interested in doing with uh, always on is uh, connecting to it using the always on availability group listeners so the always on availability group listener that we have here is AG1 listener and the idea here is that by using the listener you can actually go ahead and make sure that you're always connected to the correct environment as far as always on is concerned so let it go ahead and do the failover and after that I'll go ahead and show you how you can uh, use the availability group uh, listener to connect to the database and how it will automatically redirect you to either node 1 or node 2 depending on uh, the type of connection that you have as you can see now the failover has completed successfully and now that it's completed successfully if I right click the always on availability group and just refresh it I should see that uh, it's the primary and it's failover and everything is up and running so the last thing that I wanted to show you was how to connect to uh, the always on availability group listener as you can see I've already connected using the listener but you can also just go ahead and type in AG1 listener and then press connect uh, because of my particular systems configuration I occasionally get a timeout but uh, if I just keep trying hard enough uh, it does go through occasionally like you can see here now the thing about the listener is that it automatically goes ahead and connects you to whichever instance is available and depending on the uh, the type of connection that you're trying to establish you'll see that sometimes you get connected to the primary and sometimes you get connected to the secondary at this moment you can see that it doesn't really show a server name it just shows the listener name over here and my connection 
So if I just go ahead and use Madworks, let's see which server I'm connected to at the moment. So I'm already connected to so uh, node number two, so it's showing me node number two here, and uh, that basically tells me that the con connection that I'm going to go ahead and set up here is with node number two. Depending on if I've gone ahead and tried to configure for uh, connecting with read intent, then occasionally uh, the the connection from AG1 listener, which is my listener service, will connect me to node one. So that's pretty much all there is really about always on. And you can go ahead and uh, play around with Always On now that you've seen this video and get an idea about uh, how this works. But for the most part, uh, Always On is fairly easy. And if you've worked with um, before, or especially if you've worked with the availability, uh, if you've worked with the high availability solutions, you shouldn't have too much trouble understanding Always On. I hope you've uh, found this video useful, and uh, we will continue the series on SQL Server with some additional videos on new features in SQL 2012. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.